In this session of CCNA series, I will do a lab <coughs> on OSPF default route and load balancing method. As you know, we can also use OSPF to advertise static routes onto your network. Here we have a scenario where I have an enterprise network consisting of R1, R3, R5, R2 and a PC. And this network is connected to internet for end user internet access. This can be achieved by using a routing protocol such as OSPF to advertise a default route within an enterprise network for internet connectivity. So the R1 which is connected to ISP has a default route to internet. I mean uh, default route to R4 which is acting as an ISP router which is connected to internet. So we have a default route pointing to R1. So for, for subnet within the enterprise network a default net route is needed. Uh, so the router which is connected to ISP router has to advertise the default route to other routers using OSPF and this can be possible by enabling one command on R1. So first let me hop on to the router R1 and show you we have a default route to R4 that is our ISP router. Okay. So let me show you, show IP route. Here I have a default route pointing to R1, sorry R4. So this router can reach internet actually. Let me ping DNS server. Here you can see I can ping the DNS server, but the routers inside cannot reach the internet. Let me take the PC and try to ping. As you can see, it says destination host unreachable. Okay, so it is because there is no default route on this router R2. If you see here, there is a no default route to the router R1. So <clears throat> let me enable the default route generation command. In OSPF, you can enable this under the router OSPF subcommand. And the command is default information originate. So this command will advertise a default route to the other routers. Let me go ahead and enable it. Now if I check on router R2, you will see a default route. As you can see an external route being advertised via 172.16.2.1 which is our next hop router. This is the router R5 advertising it to R2 and R5 is receiving it from R1. If I hop on to the router R5 and do a show IP route, you will see here the route is being advertised from R1. So let's go ahead and try to ping the DNS server and you can see I can ping the DNS server. That's because I am receiving my next hop that is R2 is receiving the default route from R1. So with this uh, there is another interesting thing which you should know. Uh, the OSPF subcommand default information originate tells OSPF on R1 to advertise a default route when its own default route is working and to advertise the default route as down when its own default route fails. For example, if I remove the default route on uh, R1 the command okay so I will remove this default route 
and then this command will not work okay when the default root is not available this should not work as you can see the default root has gone so whenever the default root is not available the default information originate command will not work so there is another command uh, which advertises the default root even though if the default root is not there on r1 and that command is on r1 if you enable under the ospf command if you enable it using default information originate no matter if the default root is available or not it will advertise the default root and for sure the communication will not work but uh, the default root will be available So let me bring back the default root. So our root will be available similarly. So we're not really changing the route. So the default root will be available if the default root is not there on R1 or if it is there, this root will always be there if you have default information originate always enabled on the gateway router. 